The Benedictines in Cleveland go back to 1922 when we were founded by monks from St. Procopius Abbey outside of Lyle, Illinois. The main reason why we were founded here was because the Bishop of Cleveland had difficulty finding Slovak priests to be able to minister to the growing Slovak Catholic community here in Cleveland and also establish a high school for boys to educate the high school age sons of Slovak immigrants coming here to the United States. Slovaks in Cleveland largely came in what is known in American history as the second wave of immigration after the Civil War. Largely immigration from this period uh, focused on Eastern and Southern Europe and the Slovaks were part of this. Many Slovaks would like to immigrate to the United States simply because of the oppression that was experienced after the Ausgleich in 1868. This was a time when the Austro-Hungarian Empire began a systematic persecution of the Slovaks in Slovakia, which was under Hungarian domination at that point. And therefore, the rights of Slovaks, even the right to use their own language, was curtailed tremendously. Students and people heard speaking Slovak on the street were summarily arrested. And this was definitely a movement on the part of the Hungarian parliament to be able to destroy Slovak culture. And they came to the United States and found an opportunity to be able to own their own businesses, to be able to start their own newspapers, to be able to worship uh, in freedom, and to be able to utilize their Slovak language. And this continued to grow all the way into the beginnings of the 20th century. after the destruction of the Austro-Hungarian Empire after World War I. An independent Czechoslovakia was formed. With these new freedoms uh, and a democratic government, uh, it was important for the Slovaks to uh, have a cultural element here in the United States that would help to give succeeding generations uh, some understanding of their ancestors across the ocean, since it was often very difficult to travel over to Europe. With the subsequent problems of World War II, the communist regime of 1948 had pretty much put a stop uh, to many correspondent elements and research elements and a cultural exchange between Europe and the United States. The Institute itself, founded in 1952, was primarily done to preserve the culture that uh, was sure to be destroyed by the communist infiltration after 1948. Slovenský ústav bol založený 15. septembra v 1952 roku ako slovenská organizácia, ktorá má udržiavať slovenského ducha medzi prichádzajúcimi a žijúcimi Slovákmi v USA. Medzi zakladateľov slovenského ústavu patria opat Teodor Kojš OSB, prvý predseda dr. František Hrušovský, riaditeľ Reverend Andrew Peer OSB, tajomník Karol Strmeň, dr. Jozef Cincik a Mikuláš Šprinc. A number of Slovaks came to the United States and they sought an opportunity to be able to promote Slovak culture. They wrote in the Slovak language and there were many periodicals as well as books, pamphlets and monographs that they produced during that time period as a means of continuing their research 
in a very objective way with regard to Slovak history. Doing that all the way through the 1960s and into the early 1970s, it was very important for American Slovaks to understand the value and the hope that their country, that the Slovaks in Europe would be free from communist domination and free to be able to promote their own democracy. That occurred on the 1st of January, 1993. And so with that, the Slovak Institute continues to be a conduit with a new, free, and independent democracy of Slovakia. The Slovak Institute has the largest amount of research materials about Slovakia and Central Europe in the United States. People will be able to come here and do research on their heritage, on Slovakia. We have language resources here as well as reference materials in some seven different languages. We have artifacts of all sorts from Slovakia, uh, many of them over a century old. Crystals, statues, various cultural items that are present here. There are books, manuscripts, monographs of people that have written research papers, as well as magazines, periodicals from various Slovak organizations. Medzi jeho aktivity patrí udržiavať kontakty so spisovateľmi, historikmi v Amerike, na Slovensku a po celom svete a poskytovať im informácie, ktoré žiadajú. Ďalej udržiavať slovenský archív a knižnicu, doplňovať archívy a knižnice, ktoré potrebujú materiál o spisovateľoch, historikoch, básnikoch a umelcoch, the job of the Slovak Institute is to promote Slovak culture into the future. And so many of those who came over from Slovakia are no longer here. Generations continue to move on. And people of Slovak descent need to be able to find their roots. The Institute provides the first step in trying to find out where they can go to research and to be able to find out about their families and about their culture. And for most of these Americans, that culture is waning because of the melting pot influence that happens here in the United States. So they often come to the Slovak Institute to be able to find resources on their families and resources that will enable them to make these connections with long lost relatives in Slovakia. People always leave the Slovak Institute saying, I didn't know this existed. This is a fantastic repository. When can I come back? And so that's really important to be able to help promote understanding of culture and to help people make connections with their roots and to be able to understand and to learn more about the history of Slovakia. A very rich history, a history that is not without its controversies, but it helps people to understand the continuous struggle for freedom that we often take for granted here in the United States. Our society was founded in 1890 and located in downtown Cleveland. We've been a strong supporter of not only the Slovak cause, but also the Institute here at the Abbey. A hundred years of history are contained in the archives at the Slovak Institute. We invite all our Slovak members to make an appointment and come and see the archives at the Institute. If you have any items of Slovak interest that you are interested in donating, we will gladly accept them. And this is the place to be able to preserve those Slovak heirlooms for future generations. We invite you to visit the Slovak Institute, the home of Slovak research in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you very much.